of this lecture will be is part of a course on commutative algebra and will be about locally free modules. Um, so last lecture, we talked about stably free modules. So what we want to do is to explain what is the difference between a locally free module and a stably free module. Well, first of all, locally free modules are sort of analogs of vector bundles. So I will start by just reminding everybody what a vector bundle is. So a vector bundle is um, a, a vector bundle over a space map, space X is a map from a space V to X such that the fibers are vector spaces. There are also some conditions saying that this vector space structure would behave nicely, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. And it should look locally like um, a map from R to the N times UI to UI, where the UI are open subsets covering X and R to the N is just an n-dimensional vector space. Typical example, if we take X to be a smooth manifold, then we can just take the tangent space of X mapping to X. So this is just the tangent space whose elements are points of X together with a tangent vector at that point. Now this corresponds to a module over a ring R because we can take R to be continuous functions on X and we can take our module M to be um, sections of um, the vector bundle V. So in the case of the tangent space, um, the, the, the elements of the module M would just be tangent vector fields on X. And you can, M is a module over R because you can just do pointwise multiplication. Um, so uh, the analog of this for rings um, is where um, that the space X will correspond to the spectrum of the ring R. So, so this corresponds to the space X we had before. So we want the spectrum of R should be covered by open sets UI. And we may as well take this to be a basis of open sets. So we can take UI to be the um, spectrum of R FI to the minus one where Fi is an element of R. And in order for these to cover R, you remember that the ideal generated by the Fi's should be the whole of R. And we want the module M to be locally free, meaning that it's free on each of the open sets Ui. And what this means is that M of Fi to minus one should be free over R F I to minus one. So this is an algebraic definition of a locally free module. You just specify a number of elements generating the unit ideal of R and these modules should be, th these modules should be free over these rings. Um, so um, uh, next we, we should discuss the relation between um, stably free and free module. So first of all, stably free implies free, uh, sorry, implies um, locally free. Um, well, um, if, a, if a stably free module is not finitely generated, then we know that it's free. So it's certainly locally free. If it's finitely generated, well, a stably free module that's finitely generated is a finitely generated projective module because stably free modules are direct summands of free modules and therefore they're projective. And we will see later, or maybe we won't see later, depending whether I bother to prove this, that finitely generated projective modules are locally free.
Um, um, so stably free implies locally free. We can ask the converse, does locally free imply stably free? And the answer is generally no. And there are two reasons for this. Um, there's a um, boring reason and there's an interesting reason. So what I'm first going to do is to give the boring reason why um, stably free, why, why locally free modules may not be free. And for this, you think of it in terms of vector bundles. So we might have a space X, which is a union of two spaces X1 and X2. And we might have a vector bundle over this space X which um, looks like R times X1 over X1 and looks like R2 times X1, X2 over X2. So in other words, the dimension of the fibers of this chain. So here the fibers are one dimensional, then they're two dimensional. And this is certainly not of the form R to the N times X goes to X because that would mean the fibers all would have to have the same dimension N. So for vector bundles, they aren't necessarily stably free. And now what we do is convert this into an example for rings. So we're going to take, um, we, 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 we want spectrum of R to be disconnected. See the key point of this example is the space X has two different components. So the dimension of the fibers can vary. And for this, it's quite easy. We could just take R to be Z modulo six Z which is Z modulo 2Z times Z modulo 3Z. So the spectrum of R just consists of two points. And we can take a module which is going to be naught dimensional over this point and one dimensional over this point and M might be say Z over 3Z. And then you can see that M is obviously not stably free and it's locally free because it's free over this open set and it's free over, over this open set. Um, so um, now we come on to the uh, more interesting reason why, um, why locally free modules need not be stably free. The, the, the interesting reason is that the module M may be twisted. Um, even if the spectrum of R is connected. And the basic example of this is the Mobius band. Okay, so the Mobius band sort of um, looks something like this. You see it's, a, I'm, I'm thinking of this as being a, um, a two-sided surface. You've probably all made copies of this in kindergarten or something where you take a strip of paper and glue it by itself with a twist in so it's so it's um, two-sided. And the Mobius band maps to a circle S1. And if you take an open Mobius band, you can see the fibers are just copies of um, a one-dimensional vector space. So it's a vector bundle. And um, you can see it's not stably free. In other words, if you add a finite dimensional free vector bundle to this, you're not going to get a vector bundle, a free vector bundle. And the reason is if you go around um, S1, then this you reverse the orientation of um, the fiber. That's sort of saying the Mobius band is a one-sided surface. It means if you start here and go all the way around, you end up with the with the um, one-dimensional vector space now going in the opposite direction. And the same applies if you add a finite sum of free modules to this M1. It's still um, it, it's still you get this orientation reverses, so it's it, so it's not free. Um, you can also see this as locally free because 
if we just um, cover S1 by this open set and by this open set, say, you can see that over each of these two open sets, the Mobius band is just the product of R with the open set. So, so it's a local, so, it so it's locally free, in other words, a vector bundle. Um, if you've got um, a good imagination, you can see that if you take the sum of, um, let, let's call this Mobius band M, if you take the direct sum of two copies of this vector bundle, that means at each point, you take a direct sum of two copies of the fiber, then you can see this is isomorphic to um, the trivial or free vector bundle R2 times S1. Um, in order to see this, what you do is you, you sort of think about the line, the, the, the sort of zero section. And if you embed the Mobius band in R3 and kind of take the normal bundle to this zero section, you can see that gives you another copy of the Mobius band. And if you add those two together and think about it a bit, you can see that the fibers of those can actually be trivialized. Uh, I'll leave that as a sort of exercise in visual imagination. Um, and we can uh, convert this as usual into a um, module over a ring by taking the ring to be continuous functions on the circle and the module to be sections of the Mobius band. Um, well, I want to give a more algebraic example of um, a locally free bundle. So my second example, I'm going to take M to be the ideal generated by two and one plus root minus five in the ring R, which is Z root minus five. Um, this example keeps turning up because it's the simplest example of a non-principal ideal in a Dedekind domain. So it's an example of an awful lot of things. So we recall that this is not a unique factorization domain. As usual, 6 is equal to 2 times 3, which is 1 plus root minus 5 times 1 minus root minus 5. And we're going to use this decomposition several times. Um, first of all, we, we, as we saw earlier, M is non-principal. So it's not free as a module. Um, well, being non-principal doesn't always imply non-free for arbitrary rings, but it does for this particular ring. Um, now we want to show that M is locally free. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we have to cover R, or cover the spectrum of R, by open sets. And that's quite easy because we can just take the spectrum of R with a half inverted and the spectrum of R with a third inverted. Um, since two and three generate the unit ideal, these open sets cover the spectrum of R. So the union of these is the spectrum of R. Um, and now we want to show that M, we want to show that M with two inverted is free over R with a half inverted. And this is obvious because, um, because two is contained in M. So if two is invertible, then M um, a half is just equal to R, R a half. So this is just equal to M with a half included. And we also want to show that M a third is free over the other open set, R a third. And to do this, we need to calculate very slightly more. And we notice that here, M one third is generated by one plus root minus five. So, um, and the reason for this is M is generated by two and one plus root minus five, but two, the other generator is one plus root minus five times one minus root minus five divided by three. You remember this is two times three is the product of these two things. And three is now a unit, so, so the ideal is generated by one plus root minus five. So uh, this 
is a free module of rank one over R a third. So we've shown that M is locally free. We've covered the spectrum of R by two open sets and check that M becomes free over each of these open sets. Um, as a last example, um, we saw that from the Mobius band, if you took a sum of two copies of the Mobius band, it became free. Well, uh, we didn't actually see that because I left this as an exercise, but whatever. Um, so we can see for our example that M plus M is isomorphic to R plus R. And to see this, let's, um, let's you, you just sort of calculate a bit like this. So we can put A to be the element two plus one minus one plus root minus five um, in M plus M. And we let the element B be one minus root minus five plus two, again in M plus M. And now you just do a little bit of calculation. You find that three A minus one plus root minus five B is equal to zero plus um, one plus root minus five. And one minus root minus five A minus two B is equal to zero plus two. And now you see these two elements um, generate M. So the module generated by A and B contains naught plus M. And from this, it very easily follows that the module generated by A and B in fact contains the whole of M plus M. So this easily implies that A and B generate M plus M. And now we can get an isomorphism from R plus R to M plus M just by mapping one plus zero to A and zero plus one to B. And you can check that this is an isomorphism between these two modules. Um, a similar thing happens for the ring of integers of any algebraic number field. Um, the non-zero ideals in the number field are always locally free modules and they're free if and only if they're principal ideals. And furthermore, if you take the sum of a finite number of that, you, you can find a, if you take any such ideal, then there's a, you can find a finite number, sum of a finite number of these ideals, which is this isomorphic to a sum of a finite number of copies of the ring of integers of the algebraic number field. Um, in, in fact, um, you remember in algebraic number theory, you can form the um, isomorphism classes of ideals into something called the ideal class group, where two ideals are considered the same if, if um, you can get what from one to another by multiplying by an element of R. Um, and the ideals correspond to locally free modules of rank one. And geometrically, this corresponds to one dimensional vector bundles, which are called line bundles. So the ideal class group of the ring of integers of an algebraic number field is a sort of analog of the group of line bundles in geometry, which is called the Picard group. OK, so next lecture, we will be looking at projective modules and how they're related to locally free modules. <laughs>